The Ziyarid dynasty was an Dalamite dynasty that ruled Tabaristan from 930 to 1090, and at its greatest extent, ruled much of present-day western and northern Iran. Origins The dynasty was descended from Vardhan Shah, leader of the Dalamite Targich tribe a tribe which traced its descent back to the legendary Argush Fahadun, who was the ruler of Gilan, and lived during the time of Kaikas Rao. Vardhan Shah had a son named Ziya, who married a sister of the Gilite king Haruzandun, who bore him a son Zoroastrian named Mardavij. Mardavij later served another Dalamite named Asfar ibn Shuruya, but later betrayed the latter and conquered Tabaristan, which led to the foundation of the Ziyarid dynasty, which he named after his father. History Mardavij then began aggressively expanding his territories, killing Asfar and capturing several important cities in Iran, such as Hamadan, Dinavar, Kashin, Isfahan, Shiraz and Arvaz. He further planned to restore the Sasanian Empire through conquering Baghdad and ousting the Abbasid Caliphate, but was instead murdered in 935. After Mardavij's death, his brother and general Vushamgur was crowned as the new Ziyarid ruler in Ray. Hassan ibn Bayar, one of the brothers of the Bayad ruler Ali ibn Bayar, took advantage of Mardavij's death by seizing Isfahan from Ziyarid rule. The Samanids also took advantage of the opportunity, but were defeated by Vushamgur, who then wrested Gorgon from Samanid control. However, Vushamgur soon decided to acknowledge Samanid supremacy, and in 936 he also turned over Gorgon to Makan. Turning against Hassan, he retook Isfahan in 938. In 939 or 940 the Samanid governor Abu Ali Chagani attacked Gorgon. Vushamgur sent Makan aid, but the city fell after a long siege. Abu Ali Chagani then engaged Vushamgur in battle in Ray and defeated him, killing Makan in the process. Vushamgur fled to Tabaristan, but was faced there with a revolt by his governor of Seri, al-Hassan ibn al-Faruzan, who was a cousin of Makan and blamed the Ziyarid for his death. Vushamgur defeated him, but al-Hassan convinced Abu Ali Chagani to invade Tabaristan. Vushamgur was forced to recognize Samanid authority again. Hassan furthered the Ziyarid's troubles by retaking Isfahan in 940. When Abu Ali Chagani left for Samanid Khurasan, Vushamgur retook control of Ray. He then lost it for good in 943 to the Bayad Hassan. Returning to Tabaristan, he was defeated there by Al Hassan, who had previously occupied Gorgon. Vushamgur fled to the Bavandids of the mountains in eastern Tabaristan, then to the court of the Samanid Nuhi. Al-Hassan meanwhile allied with Hassan, but when Ibn Mudhaj took Ray from the Bayad in 945, he recognized Samanid authority. Still, in 945 Vushamgur captured Gorgon with Samanid support, but did not manage to retain his rule there. It was only in 947 when he was able to take Gorgon and Tabaristan from Al-Hassan with the help of a large Samanid army. In 948 Hassan invaded Tabaristan and Gorgon and took them from Vushamgur. While al-Hassan supported the Bayads, Vushamgur relied on his Samanid allies. Tabaristan and Gorgon changed hands several times until 955, when in a treaty with the Samanids, Iukn al-Dawla promised to leave Vushamgur alone in Tabaristan. Peace between the two sides did not last long, however, in 958 Vushamgur briefly occupied Ray, which was Iukn al-Dawla's capital. Iukn al-Dawla later made a counter-attack, temporarily taking Gorgon in 960, then taking both Tabaristan and Gorgon for a short time in 962. He may have also taken Tabaristan and Gorgon in 966 but did not hold on to them for long. Vushamgur was killed by a boar during a hunt in 967, shortly after a Samanid army had arrived for a joint campaign against the Bayards. 
He was succeeded by his eldest son by Sartan, however, the Samanid army favored another son, Karbus, and challenged by Sartan's rule. By Sartan then agreed with Rukn al-Dawla to become his vassal in return for protection against the Samanids, which forced the Samanid army to withdraw to Khorasan. In 971, the Abbasid Caliph al-Muti gave Baisatun the title of Zahir al-Dawla. Baisatun later died in 977 and was succeeded by Qabas. However, he was expelled by the Bayad ruler Adad al-Dawla in 980 because giving refugee to his rival and brother Faik al-Dawla. The Bayads now dominated Tabaristan over 17 years while Qabas was in exile in Khorasan. In 998, Qabas returned to Tabaristan and re-established his authority there. He then established good relations with the Ghaznavid ruler Mahmud of Ghazni who had taken control of Khorasan, but still acted as an independent sovereign. During the reign of Qabas, his kingdom was a major attraction to scholars. Abu Rayhan Biruni, the great scientist of the Middle Ages, was supported by Qabas. In fact, he dedicated his work Chronology to Qabas around 1000 and observed eclipses of the moon in his capital of Gorgon. Due to his tyrannical rule, Qabas was in 1012 overthrown by his own army and was succeeded by his son Manuchi who quickly recognized the sovereignty of Mahmud of Ghazni, and married one of his daughters. From 1032 to 1040, the real power behind the throne was held by Abu Khalid Jarabun Vehan, a relative of an Ushavan. In 1035, Abu Khalid stopped paying tribute to the Ghaznavids, which resulted in a Ghaznavid invasion of Tabaristan. Abu Khalijar, after having learned the consequences of not paying tribute to the Ghaznavids, agreed to continue in paying tribute. This gave an Ushavan the opportunity to imprison Abu Khalijar and gain a firm over his kingdom. In 1041-1042, the Seljuks, now the new masters of Khorasan, invaded an Ushavan's domains, which forced him to accept their authority. Anushirvan died in 1059 and was succeeded by his cousin Kai Kavas, the celebrated author of the Kavas Nama, a major work of Persian literature. Kai Kavas died in 1087 and was succeeded by his son Gilanshah. Gilanshah's reign was, however, short. In 1090, the Nazari Ishmaili state under Hassan I Sabar invaded and conquered his domains which ended the Arab rule in Tabaristan. Art and Architecture One of the most famous architectural works of the Arab dynasty is the Gonbad Kavis. The tomb is one of the earliest architectural monuments with a dated inscription surviving in post-Islamic Iran. The tomb, built of fired brick, is an enormous cylinder capped by a conical roof. The circular plan, broken by ten flanges, is 17 meters in diameter, and the walls are 5.2 thick. The height from base to tip is 49 meters. Legend has it that the body of Carbus was enclosed in a glass coffin which was suspended by chains from the interior dome inside the tower. Ziyarid rulers, Mardavij, Vushamga, Baisatun, Carbus, Bayad occupation. Karbus, Manuchi, Anushavan Sharif al-Mali, Kai Kavis, Gilanshah, Family Tree.